Hello everyone, hope you're all doing great. Um, I wanted to share some learnings that I had recently when I was creating a system in AWS. Um, it's about concurrency and throttling. Uh, you might be already aware about these concepts, especially if you're working with distributed systems. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about like how this concurrency and throttling uh, will be used uh, when you are building any system based on Lambda. Uh, you might be aware about Lambda, like it's it's a service in AWS uh, for on-demand compute. So in this video, we'll see uh, how these two concepts are important in building uh, systems that are relying on Lambda compute. And we're going to see how we can, you know, take measures uh, to ensure that we do not um, face issue due to concurrency limits or uh, throttling. Uh, before going to that, uh, I just wanted to touch base on what is concurrency and what is throttling. So concurrency in general terms, we can say it has uh, an ability of a system to be able to process a certain, um, a certain event or a request you know, in a in a parallel way. So that we call as a concurrency. So in terms of Lambda, right? Um, so Lambda, as I said, it's a on-demand compute. Um, if you have any uh, process that you want to execute um, uh, and you need a compute for a short amount of time, uh, then Lambda would be a good choice. Um, so whenever a request comes to Lambda, um, it executes that request and if if another request comes to Lambda uh, while processing the current request, then Lambda service will spin up another Lambda instance and then it tries to uh, address that request. So this process is called as concurrency in, in Lambda terminology. Um, so you can see here the diagram. So, when you, so it's based on a little skew theory right so we can actually calculate the concurrent executions of the lambda based on this formula uh, that is duration of lambda execution times number of invocation per seconds so let's say your lambda duration is for 10 seconds and you are getting uh, invocations at five uh, five requests per second then the total total uh, concurrent executions will be 50 you can think of it like, okay, uh, Lambda is executing a, a program for 10 seconds and in every second you received another five requests, right? So in every second you received another five request. So the Lambda has created concurrent instances, five concurrent instances for every second. So if it, if it is creating five concurrent instances for every second, the total 10 seconds, we are getting it as a 50 concurrent execution. So that's that's an intuitive way of uh, understanding what would be the uh, concurrency instances of Lambda at a given point of time based on the invocation count. So that's a bit about the concurrency. Now let's talk about what is throttling here, right? So whenever we design a system, right, um, the software engineers they want to estimate how many requests uh, their their system can be able to handle, right? Uh, any service is bound to its resources. Uh, when I say resources, it's memory or CPU. Uh, so we have limited amount of memory and resources, uh, memory and CPU. So we want to tell to the clients, like, what is the rate of requests that they can send so that my service can be able to provide a reliable response? I do not want to provide a degraded response to my clients. So I want to set a limit based on my constraints, that is my resources, and then I want to provide a hard threshold to the clients so that they can talk to me in such a way that we both have a reliable reliable communication so that is what uh, a throttling limit will be it's it's defining like what should be the limit 
we should provide to the clients and and the rate at which they can call to us right um, so it's kind of sounds similar to the rate limiting mechanism but a rate limiting is uh, is specified to a single user uh, whereas throttling is it's like overall system uh, ability to process multiple requests uh, like uh, the request can be coming up from the multiple clients uh, but our system at a second can process only a certain amount of request and if if the number of requests per second increases from the clients then we then the then the system provides a throttling error so that's a little bit about uh, throttling right so i wanted to think about a real world scenario where we can you know um, see this both kind of issues coming into picture right um let's imagine we have uh, you know multiple devices right and these devices are connected to cloud so whenever a uh, device faces some issues you know, internal to its application errors and all that stuff we want to send those metrics to the cloud and then we want to monitor uh, the performance of these devices so that's a simple idea uh, that's a simple process so in this case um, devices are sending the metrics to the CloudWatch and the CloudWatch is processing them and uh, providing them as metrics. So, so people who don't know what CloudWatch service is, it's a monitoring mechanism provided by AWS. We can um, create metrics out of it. Uh, we can monitor our applications. We can configure alarms and we can configure different actions based on those clubs. Yeah, so that is what uh, CloudWatch service is used for. So in this case, we are getting multiple requests from the devices and we have a use case where we need to filter those metrics and uh, filtering those metrics do not take much of a time. And so we have decided to use Lambda here. So it is very much suited for you know, short workloads. So I process those metrics, filter them so that I want to eliminate the noise and then I want to publish it as a metric. And for that, I'm using a API, put metric data. It is a CloudWatch API to create custom metrics. So this is a simple process. So there are a lot of problems um, with this setup. All right, so first setup, first problem is the the CloudWatch subscription filter. So uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say about CloudWatch subscription filter. So it is a feature in CloudWatch where you can configure filters in the um, in the CloudWatch log group. So whenever we receive an event on the CloudWatch, we can filter those events and only send specific events to certain destination. In this in this use case. Our lambda is the destination, so that's that's a simple thing about it. So yeah, coming to what kind of problems we are observing with this setup. So there is a direct coupling between the CloudWatch subscription filter and the lambda. So whenever we receive events from the devices, we are invoking the lambda, and the lambda is trying to call the put metric data API and publishing the custom metrics, right? So this direct coupling is invoking the lambda and and also helping to publish the metrics so let's say we are getting uh, multiple requests from the devices now this lambda to be able to handle those requests it will create concurrent instances so that it can process those requests and publish those metrics to the cloudwatch namespace custom namespace so what we are observing here, we are not having a control on the concurrency limit of the Lambda because if we get multiple requests, Lambda will create multiple concurrent instances and there will be a no limit for that. If we are getting a high volume request, it is the concurrent instances can go in a high number and there is a limit for a number of concurring instances for Lambda. 
um i think it's thousand for account so account level restriction is a thousand concurrent instances for lambda we can request higher amount higher quota for that but um, thousand is a default um, constraint for the number of concurrent instances so the more concurrent instances you execute the possibility of the cost also increases right the more invocations are happening to the lambda the more cost will be occurring and at the same time each concurrent instance of the lambda will be calling the put metric data api and for cloudwatch put metric data api tps is 500 transactions per second so let's say for an for an instance for a second we are observing around 500 concurrent instances of lambda and each concurrent instance of lambda is calling put metric data api so what happens here We're calling the cloudwatch put metric data api almost near the threshold and if the concurrency limit of lambda increases more due to the input request we are calling the put metric data api more than its tps restrictions so what happens the cloudwatch will be throwing the throttling error and there can be an occasion where our concurrency limits also increases above the accounts threshold so this is a very bad system and there is no reliability of data like what happens um, if your put metric data is faced with throttling what mechanisms we can take and these metrics are important i want to monitor the device's performance i cannot miss those metrics and the metrics should be reliable and at the same time i do not want to publish the same metrics again to the cloudwatch namespace because it will be duplicating those meta metrics i need to process these metrics atomically so these are some of the problems i am seeing through this design i have noted down here so and also one of the problem here is let's say from the devices we might be getting different kind of metrics right um, um and some metrics might not be in a frequent frequent way and some metrics might be publishing at a higher rate now i have a only single lambda processing all these requests and maybe some metrics do not need compute to process that and some metrics might need a very less compute so i am not having the flexibility to configure the lambda parameters here so it's very tightly coupled in terms of input request in terms of compute parameters and at the same time it is causing problem with me a uh, problem with the concurrency and throttling of put metric data api so these are some of the issues i'm observing so how can we solve this so i want to i want to you to think about this what are the solutions that you can think about solving this problem and uh, maybe please do add comments provide your thoughts uh, i'm going to provide the solution in in a next next video session i'm going to do a deep dive on this um yeah please do comment what what solutions you can think about here um what optimizations we can uh, bring in to make this uh, system better um hope you enjoyed this content uh, please do like and um, share if you like this content i'll be coming up more uh, more of these videos um, helping to understand the difficulty concepts and uh, um, the concepts that we can use in our real world uh, system design. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, have a great day.